As Keith has mentioned, we've had hundreds of emails. People are really interested to learn about what we've used in the River to Reef show, how it works, why we've chosen it for the program. So today we're going to talk about the boat. So we're going to go to the front and start there. The River to Reef project was all about showing people what it's like to tow a boat up the east coast of Australia, enjoying some typical coastal fishing. As you've seen in the program, Hodgie's given the bar crusher an absolute hiding. <laughs> Lucky it's strong enough to take it. The reason it's so durable is that it has a full mattress of subfloor framing. Stringers running bow to stern, frames running across, welded in tread plate floor, very strong. The other great design attribute about this boat is that it's a deeper V boat than most plate aluminium boats on the market. It's, it's a narrower, deeper V design. When we combine that with the water ballast cavity in the back of the boat, it gives the boat great stability of rest, but a terrific cut through wind chop. Just what people want in coastal and offshore boating. One of the really unique features of this boat is the water ballast cavity. It's a fantastic design aspect that gives the boat extra stability at rest. How it works is a little bit of water runs into the hull, reduces the buoyancy of the hull just a bit, drops the hull down onto its chine so it settles down so much and gives the boat extra stability at rest. As soon as you take off, you put the throttle down, the nose lifts, the boat moves forward, the water dumps almost immediately and you're up and planing. Trim tabs, not essential but they are a very handy thing to have on a boat. They give you great control over the side to side trim angle. If your boat's unevenly loaded or you're travelling in, in strong beam on winds, you find you just touch the button on the tab, the tabs will adjust and level your boat. Fantastic. If we look at the ladder, you don't want your line getting caught up in anything around the back of the boat. Swim platform if you have to step out here and gaff a fish, great idea. Also through the swim platform we've got a, um, a burly bucket muncher. Most coastal boaties are going to burly up at some stage. We have a step through which makes it very easy to get in and out of the boat. A really important decision when you're setting up a trailer boat is engine choice. There's some fantastic engines out there on the market at the moment and the technology is always racing. One we've found really works well on this Bar Crusher 620 is the Suzuki DF150. Let me describe it to you. It's an inline four large displacement engine which means it's got plenty of cubic inches. Nothing beats cubic inches when you're going at the back of a big swell and you want plenty of low down torque and grunt to get your boat up there without the revs dying off. The Suzuki certainly does that and is a class leader there. One feature we really like about it is the fact that the power head is offset. They've actually moved the engine weight forward and introduced a second stage reduction in the gearing under the power head. What that does is it effectively makes the boat just feel a little bit better through the water because of that weight distribution. It really works well. It's matched with a 19 inch pitch stainless steel prop which really holds in the water nicely. We've just found it to be a beautiful match for the boat. Now we're going to hop in the cockpit of the boat and have a look at what makes this such a great fishing boat. We're going to start with the batteries. We've got the dual Optima battery set up here with switching. You can either have either or battery on, both on or both off. Great setup. Folding rear seat. Something the River to Reef boys found really, really convenient to use. Folds up and hides everything away. If we look down on the floor here, we've got a sump in the back of the boat with a bilge pump on your left and the live bait tank pump on your right. Any water that lands in the boat is going to run to the lowest point, a switch on the dash blasts it out with a high capacity pump. Here we've got the kill tank, great place to bleed your fish, throw your fish, great place to clean your fish, put a rod in there while you rig up, you can replace the plastic there if it gets a bit tatty. And the beautiful thing about this is when the fish aren't biting, you can pull it out drop a ski pole in the hole, go for a wakeboard. Over here we've got the live bait tank. Simply turn the switch on on the dash. This is the outlet here, blast water into the tank. Great for keeping that live bait alive. If we look at the side of the boat, great big space here in the, uh, in the side pocket. Great for gaffs and rods and nets. Get everything up off the floor, out of the way. If we look at the side decks, nice and wide. Great for Hodgie's big cracked bare feet when he's casting off the side of the boat. <laughs> If we look at the width of the side deck, deliberately so, so that you've got somewhere to sit around the edge of the boat. People sit around the edge of the cockpit, it clears the cockpit, gives you, it really doubles your cockpit space. You'll notice in the combing here, at the edge of the side deck, if you stand up against it, it hits you in the thigh, just in the right place, very comfortable. You'll also notice your toes are underneath. By making that cockpit a bit wider, your toes are underneath, your back's straight, you get home after a long day on the water, feeling quite comfortable. And, happy with your day. This boat's got eight cast aluminium rod holders around the deck, three in the bait board and six overhead on the roof. Rod holders everywhere. Now we've looked at the fishing area at the back of the boat, let's move forward and have a look at how this baby's managed, how it's handled, how it's driven, how it's controlled. Firstly, a great seat is very important when you're out doing offshore and coastal boating. You want a comfortable chair if you're out there all day. These seats pivot and slide, 
If we look here, we've got the Furuno uh, Sonar and we've got the Furuno GPS Plotter. Great units, colour, positioned beautifully so that they're right in front of the driver's face so he can see all the action. Look here, you've got your engine gauges at the top of the dash, your trim tab switches here to control your trim tabs at the back of the boat, your general uh, switches here controlling your navigation light, bilge pump, live bait tank pump. Behind here you've got your stress-free uh, anchor winch switch and your circuit breaker to control your winch up and down on your anchor. And you'll notice the microphone on the ICOM radio here falls to hand beautifully. In an emergency you want to be able to get your hand on the radio quickly. You'll see over here you've got the remote control falls to hand beautifully again, so you've got one hand on the wheel and one hand on the throttle. This is a great layout for a fishing boat. There's going to be a little bit of spray flying in any boat. With this, what you do is you simply pull the roof down, grab the handle, roof closes down on top of the windscreen, shuts off that gap, it just helps keep your cockpit nice and dry. When you pop it open again, it's great because you've got no cloudy clears in front of your face and you can see fish and birds working on the water. Fantastic design for a fishing boat. Gets even better. This roof and windscreen fold into the boat to store it in a low garage. Let me show you how that works. Your storage height in this model comes down to about 2300 off the ground. The River to Reef team found this fantastic when they were staying in low roof motels all the way up the east coast, but it's really designed to put it, put it away in your low carport or garage at home. Fantastic for storage, a problem everyone has with a trailer boat. Here we've got a Sarka anchor fixed in the, in the bow sprit and pulled in tight, so if you're running through rough water, it can't bounce out. You can't have an anchor bouncing out of a well or out of the bow sprit of a boat. It must be secure. If we come back here, to get our anchor up, we've got the stress-free anchor winch. Fantastic design. Simple, very clever, works beautifully. Interesting in terms of the engineering, when most of your rope and chain are out, the diameter of the axle of the winch is quite small, so your gearing's quite low to really get that anchor up. And as it gets closer to the surface and the reel builds up, your gearing becomes higher. If we have a look at the front of the bar crusher boat here, you can see these things were designed to punch out through bars. If you mistime it when you're running out through a bar or you're out offshore and you should happen to take a white cap or a wave over the top, it's good to know that your boat's designed to do that sort of thing. If you have a look at the cabin on this boat, very, very strong, all aluminium, swept back, really stiff when it comes to punching through a wave. If you look at the windscreen here, very solid fabricated windscreen frame. We jump back in the cockpit here, we can discuss another very important aspect in a fishing boat, and that's storage. If you have a look around the cockpit, you can see we've got underpunk storage here. Great place for life jackets, coats and gear. Storage up the front here, under the front step, under the box I'm sitting on. And also, uh, the boxes that the seats sit on. We've got in-box storage, seat box storage. Um, fantastic for keeping your grab bag. Those of you who don't know what the grab bag is, a lot of fishos have a, um, a bright yellow bag in their boat that'll have their repurb and their flares. If in an emergency you need to go over the side for any reason, you can grab that bag and you're in business. You'll notice there's an in-floor fuel filler. Great thing about this is you can actually open the bung, look in the tank and see how much fuel you got. If you get a dose of bad fuel, you can see inside your tank. Most boats have a side fuel, fuel filler where you don't have access to the tank. This is a great system. The other great thing about this system is that your fuel breather hose, your fuel pickup, it's over here under this little cover and runs through the helm step, so there's no hoses or hose clamps subfloor. One of the real traps in uh, boats with a subfloor tank is that if a hose perishes or a hose clamp comes loose, you can have fuel and vapour sloshing around inside your hull. Very dangerous. Let's go over the trailer, we'll have a look at some of the features, some of the design elements in the trailer, and tell you what makes a good trailer and, and, and differentiates the good from the bad. If we start up the front here, you need a decent winch. It's got to be well designed and it's got to have gearing so that you can get your boat on easily. With a trailer like this, it's really designed to drive on and off, so you shouldn't really need to use your winch, but you still need a good winching in those situations where you do need to winch on. If we start up the front here, it's got the jockey wheel, which makes it very easy to, to pop on and off the, the ball of your car. This one's got mesh on it, mesh walkway. Again, typically people would drive a boat like this on and off, but sometimes people like mesh if they have to walk down the trailer for some reason. If we go down here, we can see it's got wobble rollers which support the boat side to side and it's also got a full ladder of keel rollers up the middle. Some trailers have one or two keel rollers, not enough support. We believe that on a trailer like this, supporting a boat like this, it's great to have a full ladder of keel rollers all the way up. The other thing this trailer has which is great is these skids. They run 90 degrees to the keel rollers and what they do is they're not designed to support the boat when it's on the trailer but they're designed to level and direct it 
up, up to the winch post. So the thing self-levels, self-aligns and hits the winch post every time. Very important to have enough skids and guides to get your boat on level and straight every time, come what may. Especially if there's a bit of wave action on the ramp or a, or a side current. Everybody's had that experience that's owned a trailer boat. These trailers are designed to get that boat on every time and get it on easily. The trailer's got plastic guards which will take a bit of a bump but are quite strong. It's got powder coated aluminium mag, mag wheels which look great. Load rated tyres for the specified load carrying of the trailer. If we move down the back here, something that just about everyone will relate to, lights on a trailer. Everybody in their life has had a problem with a tail light on a trailer. With these new LEDs they've overcome a lot of the problems that we used to have and they've got a great service life. They're sealed, uh, very bright and they don't fill up with salt water. Fantastic.